Well, Richard Wong plays a big role at one of Silicon Valley's hottest investment firms. Wong is a partner at Excel Partners, an early investor in Facebook and Groupon. Wong just led the firm's investment in another company, the company behind Angry Birds, Rovio. In our interview today, I started by asking him how that Rovio investment is working out. Well, it's, it's working out pretty well. I mean, you know, as you might have seen, Angry Birds is, is a bit of a cultural phenomenon. You know, when we invested, they had about 75 million downloads, and they've just announced they're about 250 million. So obviously, that's about a little more than a three x growth in a in a short four month period of time. So we're we're quite pleased with the progress thus far. And it's more than just seeing an investment that you want to make. You are calling them almost every day, making sure you can make this kind of investment. Yeah. So you obviously have some high hopes. What kind of return on investment would you be expecting from, from something like Rovio? Well, I think, you know, we are often, for the companies that are most exciting, we often have to pursue quite aggressively. So yes, we are often trying to, quote, go back to the ball versus trying to let them come, come pitch us. I think in terms of specific investment returns, it's sort of hard to call that exactly. And we certainly uh, hope to make some, you know, substantial multiples of our money. Traditional venture capital, you try to achieve somewhere between a 5x to a 10x outcome, and certainly in almost all of our investments, we strive for that. It's one thing if you're aggressive and an early investor in a company, your firm, for example, with Facebook. It's another if you're being aggressive investing after these firms have gotten a lot of financing. Everybody's talking right now about whether or not there is a bubble. What yeah. do you think about that? Well, I think, yes, to, to speak to that point for a moment, I think there is a bit of what, I think in the venture capital industry, a bit of what's called perhaps a barbell effect, where you're either investing perhaps very early stage or perhaps you're investing once the company has at a certain degree of momentum. And I think the dynamic that underlies that is because it's so much easier, cheaper to start a company these days with low cost uh, uh, Amazon cloud uh, technology or distributing on Facebook. It doesn't take that much capital to get going, which is why you, why you have that type of dynamic. But when you hear this week about valuations on companies like Twitter at seven, eight billion dollars, I mean, what right. do you think of that? Well, uh, great, yeah, good question. Uh, I, I think certainly there's, I would say, a lot of optimism in Silicon Valley right now and in technology investing in. I think there is going to be some amount of froth in certain categories. That said, I'd point out that the last decade, when we shifted from dial-up to broadband, created companies like Google, like YouTube, like Salesforce.com, like Netflix, which in many of them are 10 to $100 billion valuation companies. And I think we're seeing that type of transition again today with the shift to social and the shift to mobile. Speaking of social, there's no bigger fish than Facebook, which was an early investment for your firm. How do you think that company is, is viewing what's going on right now, given that it hasn't gone public yet, and maybe it will go public, but is it concerned about too many people talking about a bubble right now? Well, I, I think I'll, I'll largely let the company speak for itself on anything related to their financial performance or their plans. However, I think they have publicly talked about achieving 750 million users, which is you know, quite an accomplishment. And I would note that it's active users, not just uh, users signed up. So I think it, uh, it has become a substrate or ingredient that other people are building companies on top of now versus just a social network work itself. So I think it has some incredible potential still in front of us. But they're not feeling pressure from investors like you to go public, or are they? No, we, we take a quite long-term view of this. I mean, for example, an investment we made in Metro PCS, we've been in for 15 years. And uh, Facebook, I believe, was made roughly five years ago. So it, this is still, uh, in venture capital terms, uh, not that long of a period of time. And sometimes you guys will take profits on part of your investment. You did that, for example, with Facebook. I mean, is Facebook a company that you would still sell a small stake in again in the near term or anything like that? Uh, I would just, yeah, our, our, in terms of going forward, it's still being decided, but there is a, it is true that we did sell a small percentage of our original stake in, uh, at, a, at a quite nice return back about six months ago, yes. Um, you mentioned Google earlier. It's been a pretty big couple of weeks for Google with yes. Google Plus hitting the market. When we came into this year, you said this was going to be the year for Android. What about for Google? Today, for example, Morgan yes. Stanley downgraded the stock concerns about some of the new investments they're making. What do you think about Google? What do you think about Google Plus? Well, I think, you know, first, Google is definitely an incredibly successful company, but they are fighting a lot of battles on a lot of different fronts right now. If I could just speak to the Android uh, talk for, uh, uh, topic for a moment, I think the potential that we talked about all a year ago or two years ago has absolutely been fulfilled and that Android has now surpassed Apple iOS in terms of the number of handsets being shipped and is actually very much revolutionizing the mobile space. And I think that 
that category is one, mobile, where a lot of great and interesting companies, of course, like Rovi, are going to be built in the future. So that, I think, gives Google a very, a very interesting position. So you guys have had a lot of home run investments over the last couple of years. Where's your next investment going to be? Well, even though it's hard to predict the next specific one, maybe I can talk about some of the themes or the trends that we're seeing. So I think, you know, it's, it's fairly clear, I think, that we're seeing a shift from what I call the traditional broadband internet to the mobile and social internet. And you're now being able to build services and new applications on top of things like Facebook that take advantage of those 750 million users. So I think we're definitely looking very closely at all of those types of applications. We're definitely looking at new forms of mobile applications. And those are two very, very uh, uh, specific areas that we're spending a lot of time looking at right now. And that was Rich Wong of Excel Partners.